Hey guys, here we are. We're back in section four. This is history 1301. Uh, and this is part three. This will wrap up this series on the French and Indian War. Uh, a couple things I want to cover here. I want to cover that, first of all, who won this thing? The English actually won it. Once the English did win the war, the French pulled back. Uh, the relationship then will became mainly the American Indian who had kind of played the French against the English now have to deal with the English. The English did not have a good relationship with the American Indian. Uh, there was a guy named Jeffrey Amherst, and you can look at your PowerPoint just like I am, and Amherst was put over Indian relationships, and his deal was to try to exterminate the Indians. Uh, in fact, if you read there, you read where he tried to use biological warfare to kill them. He was trying to infect them with smallpox. He would take blankets and go to these different uh, tribes and uh, take all these blankets and put all this, get all this pus and everything, and then fold it up and give it to healthy Indians to try to annihilate the Indians. Basically, the British were not able to defeat the Indian in open field. The American Indian was just a guerrilla warfare fighter. He's 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 Rambo. Just think of the movie Rambo. That's the American Indian. Uh, he just don't have a machine gun and a tank and a jet like Sylvester Sloan, but he was a guerrilla warfare fighter. So after this French and Indian War is finished, a couple of things is very important. Right directly after that, there's an Indian named Pontiac who was a leader. He declared war mainly on the British because of the British's harsh treatments towards American Indians. So as soon as this is over with, then the British begin to battle Pontiac and the Indians. There's an Indian war, okay? Now, when all this is going on, the British Crown said, look, you know, we have gone over there. We have fought these Indians. We have fought the French. You need to help us. You being you colonists, you guys need to help us out. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin to tax you, and this taxation will be for you to pay for the wars we've been going over there. Now, you know, guys, I always tell everybody American history is written by Americans for Americans. But let's think about this. True enough, the French and Indian War was two European nations that fought on this continent, but the British did have a point when Pontiac was attacking them, that was the American Indians. Now, true enough, you can also say, well, hold on, Mr. Offer. Uh, you know, that guy, uh, that guy uh, Amherst, he kind of started all this, and he did. Uh, but they were the British Army was somewhat protecting the colonists, because if they had enough, I'm going to tell you guys, the American Indian, uh, when you study Pontiac's war, which followed right after the French and Indian War, that was a devastating war. And they almost pushed the English into the ocean. Uh, the American Indian is a formidable fighter, and uh, and they did extremely well. The, probably the thing that hurt the American Indian was a couple of things. Uh, number one, they never could get their tribes to unite uh, 100%, and the poor Indian was decimated by disease. Guys, smallpox and all these disease that the Europeans had brought over here, it decimated them. So they just didn't have the numbers as they should. And if they'd had that with the, under the organization of Pontiac, they probably would have wiped the British out. Uh, so now, so we kind of understand we're going into that American Revolution. Remember taxation, taxation, the Stamp Acts, all these things we're going to talk about in session five, okay? Why were they having to do all that? They were having to pay for that French and Indian War. They were having to pay for the also Pontiac's War. So there were things that the col the colonists were asked by the Crown, the English Crown, to pay for. Uh, you got to remember, guys, England had had an occupied army in this continent for years. It takes money to have an army. Uh, whenever you send any army uh, anywhere. You have to feed them. You have to house them. And the English crown was having to pay for to having their army over here. 
Uh, so taxation. So what do we get out of this whole thing? It's a couple of interesting things. I want to point out three things. One is strictly a Mr. Offer thing. It's not going to be on your test, but, uh, you know, it's something I I like to I, I think about. Of course, I, I, I live in history, maybe too much, but uh, number one thing is we learned in the in the French and Indian War, the colonists watched how the American Indians defeated the British. That's important, guys. When we get to that American Revolutionary War, there are guys like Daniel Morgan. Have you ever seen the movie The Patriot? Uh, who that's not actually uh, the the guy Mel Gibson plays isn't actually a real person. It's based off several. But what you had is in this continent, you had a lot of guys that were backwoodsmen sharpshooters. If you're from Louisiana or Texas, we just call those good old boys. But and they were guys that they had, to, they were very deadly with these weapons. They hunted with them and they weren't going to play by the rules. They saw how the American Indians had defeated the British. And we will use a lot of those tactics in the American Revolution. Uh, another thing is very important that taxation, guys. All member that because of those wars, and I said those wars, the French and the Indian War and Pontiac's War, you got to put them together. You just can't say, uh, well, it's the French and Indian War. There also was Pontiac's War, okay? You had two wars that were kind of back-to-back -back right before that American Revolution. Uh, uh, because of that, they had to increase taxes. And because they had to increase those taxes, that's going to lead to resentment with the colonists, that resentment, and the British will push us more and more to pay these taxes as that happens. That is that link in that chain. Remember, guys, I told you, history is a link and a chain. Those are links that are going to be connected to that American Revolution. That's going to cause us to go on that American Revolution, okay, with other things. Now, here's the last thing I want to throw out there. This is not a test question or anything else. But in history, guys, you often find, because I live in the world of history, and I mean, it's my world. I, I really, I love history. I look at things from a historical point of view, uh, which probably drives my wife and other people crazy, but that's the way I look at it. Just like a mathematician would look at things maybe in a mathematical form, uh, I look in the world of history. Guys, let's look about this, Okay. England had the greatest army and the most advanced army. There was almost. They will come over here with an advanced army. They had won over all these continents, and they're going to fight the American Indian. Now, think about that. American Indian, he's a little guerrilla warfare fighter. He's fighting on his territory. Okay, he's got limited weapons, but he is fighting a different kind of war. He's not going to play by the rules. He is going to hide in trees and behind rocks and whatever. And he is a really self-contained guerrilla warfare fighter. Okay, and he is fighting against a well-mechanized army that has won over continent and continent and continent. He's fighting against the British. Now, let's put this in perspective. The Vietnam War. America goes to Vietnam. Guys, we are a world power. We had fought in uh, World War I, World War II. We fought in Korea. We had jets, helicopters, planes. We had all kind of stuff. Okay? We were a world power. We will go to Vietnam and fight what? The little guerrilla warfare fighter. Uh, we're fighting on his territory. Limited weapons. He's got the AK-47. Uh, you know, he's a little limited guy, but yet he is fighting on his territory. He is going to hide behind trees and rocks and jump up out of the ground and do all this stuff. And America is going to fight these little guerrilla warfare fighters. History has repeated itself. Think about that, guys. Before, it was the American Indian fighting the British, and we were with the Indians. Then the British, the British were, they were a mechanized army. Now we go through course of time, a couple of hundred years, and now it's America. 
America will go to Vietnam. We will go to another continent, just like the British went to another continent. We will come with the best mechanized army of its day. And we will fight the little guerrilla warfare fighter. Uh, but it's not the American Indian, it's the, the Viet Cong. That's something, and that's totally my opinion. Uh, and anybody that watches this, uh, I mean, it's just, that's a Mr. Offer thing. And everybody is welcome to their opinion, and I'm welcome to mine. And you can agree with me or you not can't. It doesn't matter. That's not a test question. That's just something that I see in history. And I use Vietnam, but we have, we're in a war right now where we're fighting that little guerrilla warfare fighter. Uh, you know, and it's really hard for mechanized armies to come in and to fight these guys. Uh, but we see it all the way back, guys. You know, there's an old story in history. You've always heard this over and over. If you don't learn by history, you're doomed to what? Somebody said it. Repeat it. So, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this session. Uh, we'll come back into session five. And now we're going to get into closer to that American Revolution. And now you know how important that the French and Indian War and Pontiac's War actually were, because if those two events had not occurred, I don't know if, if they would have, uh, if the British would have increased our tax or not. Who knows? We don't know. A lot of, a lot of this kind of stuff you can speculate. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this lecture series. We come back, we're going to be in five, and we're getting closer and closer to that American Revolution. We'll see you guys in.